The longer you use Emacs, the more buffers will begin to accumulate. You can look at the open buffers by pressing Ctrl X B like normal and pressing Tab to get a list of the buffers. But once you have enough buffers, this list may not be good enough for you anymore. Instead, you can press Ctrl X Ctrl B to get a buffer list. Let's press Ctrl X Zero to have this new buffer fill the frame. This buffer list behaves similarly to a dirt buffer or a packages buffer in that you can move to a line, press D to mark a buffer for deletion, or in this case to be killed, and then press X to close those buffers. If you're a neat freak, you may want to do this regularly, but there's really not much of a need. I regularly work with 300 or so buffers, plus or minus 100, open, and don't notice any slowdown with Emacs. If you just want to get rid of some buffers that you haven't used in a while, use Meta X Clean Buffer List. One reason you might have for keeping the list of open buffers short is to make it easy to switch between buffers when you need to do tab completion. So why don't we look at another way to switch between buffers more conveniently, and that is Edo Mode. Edo Mode takes over, and now when you press Control x b some buffers are already listed in the mini buffer for you to switch to. To cycle through these, you can press Control s or to go backwards, Control r and you can just press Return when you've found the buffer that you want. Edo Mode also lets you begin typing some of the characters in the buffer name and narrow the completions interactively. Let's make Edo Mode enabled by default by using Customize and then searching for it. And the record that we want is Edo Mode. Notice that it's set to turn on both buffer and file and the state is showing that it was changed outside of Customize. But let's save it for future sessions and see what happens to our .emacs file. But notice that Edo Mode, when we went to use the Find File functionality, has also taken over. And it may be a little bit confusing at first. But just ignore everything in the curly braces. And let's look for .emacs as usual. And so here's the line where Edo Mode is set to both. Let's change one other customization for Edo, and that is what's called Enable Flexible Matching. Currently, when switching buffers, as long as we type a continuous string, Edo will look for that in any of the buffer names. But what if we only vaguely know what the buffer is called, and we want to type in a few characters from anywhere? Maybe we remember that we had possibly a Nyan Modes autoload, but NM doesn't match any of our buffers. Let's try turning flexible matching on. Let's just set for the current session, and now NMA matches both our Nyan Mode autoloads and some of the characters in GNU Emacs. I'm personally going to leave this off for now. There's one possible annoyance with using Edo Mode for Find File, and that is what happens when you want to create a file that is a prefix of an existing file or directory that you have. If I want to make a file just called Chapter 1 with no extension, I can't seem to find a way to tell Edo Mode I just want Chapter 1. One method is to use Control J instead of return. But if you can't remember that, you can temporarily disable Edo Mode in Find File by pressing Control F and you'll be back to normal Find File. Here are a couple more tricks you might find useful when working with a large number of buffers. One situation you might find you have is 
Say you're working on a project with multiple directories, and in each directory is a file of the same name. Now, when you have two of these files open, Emacs disambiguates between them by adding a number to the second buffer with that name. And sometimes it's difficult to tell which buffer is which. A better way is to use Uniqify. Let's customize group Uniqify. The most important option to change is the buffer name style. I personally like post forward. Let's see how that works. Now let's try switching our buffers. But nothing's changed yet. Let's try killing this buffer, switching back to the sandbox. and opening it again. Now, instead of a number two between brackets, we can see the directory name after a pipe character. And when we switch to the other index.html, there's nothing there yet because it was open before our change. But let's try again. And now it's showing as chapter one. Let's look at one more tip before we go. From inside of a buffer, you can use occur to find all lines that match some regular expression. Let's just search for quote. What if you don't remember the buffer name or file name, but you remember something about the contents and want to search through your open buffers? You can use multiple or multi-occur in matching buffers. The first argument is a regular expression for the buffer's file name. We'll just match anything. The second is the regular expression. Let's say we want to match nil. Now we have a buffer with all the matches in each of our open buffers. Speaking of searching, We'll look at more ways of searching through files in the next video in the series. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you then.